Uh, hi, everyone. If anyone's here, welcome to my session. Uh, the title of my talk is Improving UX with an Interactive Decision Tree. And that is a challenge that we have had internally, and we talked about how to resolve this problem. I'm going to take you through the journey we had with that. News talking here. My name is Hugo Heumann. I'm tech lead at uh, Morphed. I'm based in uh, Western Australia, in Perth, and I've been working in the Drupal world for roughly eight years, eight or nine years now. I'm working at Morphed, and uh, if you have been to any previous sessions today, I'm sure you have caught uh, the Morphed tagline and what we're doing. I shouldn't bore you too much with that. We should try to get on to what you want to show us that. So I divide my talk into four, or which actually five parts. So we'll do a demo in that, but uh, run through the steps we took and uh, how we worked with it. The first, and uh, I often, when I have built websites in the past, one of the is who is going to write the content. But when you're working with uh, government websites, you often face another challenge that you essentially have too much content. You have lots of documents, you have lots of information, well, the problem is instead, instead of getting the content into the website to guide the visitor to the right spot so the visitor website can find the right, the right information. And we needed to integrate with the GovCMS product as a service and software as a service. So we couldn't use custom modules in this case because we want, while we needed to work in both ways. And it needs to be easy for a content editor to work with. Uh, if, if a product is not easy to work with, no one will use it and no one would like it. It was really important for us. How can we get the content editor to like what we're doing? We put a few hard requirements, things we needed to, that we needed to fulfill. So we have other ideas as well, but this was the four hard requirements. The first one was, must be manageable by uh, a Drupal editor without any further training or very, very little training at least, because uh, otherwise it defeats the whole purpose. It must work with GovCMS, both versions, uh, and it must be instant feedback, no service side loading, no waiting. We want to make it easier and easy for the visitor. Easy to work with, it should be fast. And it shouldn't require an extra code. Once it's deployed, you should be able to do, uh, yeah, essentially everything, all the changes you can without getting a developer on board. The solution we picked was to use the taxonomies in uh, Drupal. They're already there. People are familiar with them. So it's, to get any content editor or Drupal admin on board should be easy would be easy. We opted to build it in uh, React.js because that's something we internally have experience with and uh, it should seem very suitable for this use case. We have also added uh, handlebars, uh, the JS engine to, to compile the templates if needed. You don't need to use it if you want to extend it with code it's possible. So you don't have to touch the React code. Instead of touching the React code and compile, you can just work with the handlebar template. It can be added as a block, as a paragraph, or inserted manually in the code. And as was one of the requirements, every item can be customized in the template from the backend. Uh, this is a Screenshots from the back. I will come with a full demo yet. I just want to run through uh, a few things that decisions we made. Uh, I have opted for a COVID symptom checker uh, just as a demo. As I say, I'm based in WA where we don't have much COVID, but uh, uh, I 
can see this a problem in the nation in general. And it feels like someone can, everyone can identify their problems and have been nervous about it. So this is a screenshot from the economy view. And uh, those are the other steps. We have the, you can edit the terms. And uh, we have one editor, uh, the name is for the editor, and the option is what the user sees. And then for every step, we can display something towards the end of it. This is how it looks uh, like in, this, in our case for the user. Uh, one thing that was important for us is to you should have a minimum amount of coding. Like if you have a design system, it's fit in, and we can feed in the, the CSS. So this, what you see on this one is three different design systems at the same time. We got the New South Wales design system, we got the Australian design system, and Bootstrap. One component each, which means you can send in your classes, and it works out to the box. The installation is fairly simple. Uh, you create a taxonomy with the required fields. So There's a few required fields and a bunch of optional fields that you don't really need, depending on if you just want to get started. Uh, the timeline is commonly it needs to be done yesterday, and that's what one of the focus here. And then you create a block or a paragraph. Then you need to do a little bit of code just because we cannot have it in a module. But this is the minimal implementation. We add one div to the to a template and then we require three JavaScript files. That's all we need to do to get it started. Uh, I'm now going to run through a little demo of it and if anyone has any questions just uh, send them through. So here you got the, I maybe should zoom in a little bit so everyone can see. Uh, this is what the user will see when they first come into the page. They will get the question, how are you feeling? Thank you, they choose if they have any of the symptoms or if they're not feeling too well at all, having more serious symptoms. This can of course be expanded, but I should to keep it very simple so we can run through the whole journey. In this case, I choose the first option. And the next question I'm getting is, which state are you based in? Because it's likely that depending on which state, you should do take different actions. If I were to choose uh, Queensland, in this case, I get the next question, where, where do you live? What's your closest city? And uh, I pick one on them and get a little bit of information. Uh, during this, I can always go back either with the buttons or by clicking in this one. If we can also see, we can either present the information here or we can choose to, if I choose New South Wales in this case, it will redirect me to another page on the site. So one of the things that was the main thing with this was to not only provide information, but also getting the person to the right page. So in many ways, many times, you know, you accessing, this was faster for a person to do maybe three clicks than to work their way from a menu and read a lot. Because here we can get, we can get the questions out. There is no wait time. Click, 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 and it takes you straight to the right spot. Uh, can reset if someone feels that they haven't they've done it wrong, they can reset and we'll start from the beginning of the journey again. And sometimes we need to, if someone is really not feeling well, have serious symptoms, we want them to contact the emergency services as fast as possible, and then we just present them with a link. So this is the the front what we will see when we're working with it, or as a, as a user. I will now uh, redo that, show you the backend and how, we, how easy it is to work with things in it. Uh, I'll start with just 
one of the terms, which is the most common symptoms. This is the view for the, for the editor. So you can set a label on one of your, one, one of your items, but you can, and you can set something else that are shown to the user. And if you need more information, as you saw on the, the more serious symptom, we can put extra. We can also put pictures. Anything you can put in a WYSIWYG backend, you can put here. And once you click one, we decide to, we can show information that often we show the next question. So we show a little bit of information and then the next question, we're the next step. We have a few more things that I want to divulge in now. We can choose a template if we, depending how we want to display it. So we can predefine templates for each step. We can have a default one and for each step. Uh, as you saw on the screenshot earlier, we just work our way through. Essentially, we can move around things as we and. Uh, we can also do something that we call a jump. So say we, it's many, it could be in a case like this, it could be many different paths that should lead to that, that should contact the emergency services. And instead of adding them by the end of each step, we can choose to, let uh, load here, in the advanced setting, we can choose to, okay, here, when you click this one, you shouldn't, go to the next step. You should be directed. You should jump through the system. The visitor will never see that, but then you can have one item. The idea is you should never have to write any content more than once. And as you saw for new such ways, we can also put a redirect. So we can redirect someone to another page. And if you redirect someone to another page and choose to keep the journey on that page, you have been added as a block. That can be used uh, it's we hold we we keeping we keeping it as a saving it to the local storage for every click. So no matter where you are on the page, it will always remember where you are. Uh, I'll now just go quick here. Uh, if I add one term, say I add uh, WA here, and uh, I just write a little bit of info for this one. We don't much and then I of course want to choose where in the tree either I choose it here or I will move it around while I create it. Once it's added all I need to do is to reload a page and pick one here and I have this step. So I can move on to the next step. And uh, normally you need to clear the cache but this is my local testing environment so I don't Okay, that's we're saving a little time there. And that's one works. Uh, so this is our idea. It should be easy to create this decision tree, either to provide information or to guide the person to the right to the right spot on the on the site. If you want more information, you can either just Ask me now, or send me an email, or contact more. We got the exhibitor boat here at the at the conference. Any questions? Hey, I have a question here. Uh, how many levels of nesting and roots will be possible? And uh, I don't think that I guess if we will have a practical limit somewhere. Uh, how many nesting levels? I never managed to nest out. Drupal in the, in the taxonomy, but uh, if there is not a hard limit in uh, Drupal, it would not be a hard limit in this one. But if you have 300 levels, it might be a bit heavy, so I wouldn't recommend that. You can insert multiple journeys on, uh, on, on the same page. So if you have that much, you might be an idea to divide it. And uh, another question is, uh, if you go to an external URL, you can still show the navigation, etc. that you got there. Uh, once we go to an external URL, we cannot control it, because uh, 
then we have left. But we can put any kind of link. Uh, so if we have an external uh, external site where we can put a query string and tell them we're coming from this site, that's the way we can. And of course, when you're coming back to the Drupal site, it will remember where you left, no matter where you're coming to. Uh, good question there. How to flag that a particular taxonomy is for driving a journey? Uh, you don't really need to flag them in that way. The taxonomy is a taxonomy. You could use it for other things as well, even if it's, of course, best used for uh, for the journey, because otherwise it might not make sense. Uh, I might have missed to explain that part in the head. In this case, I have choose to embed it as a, as a paragraph. And in the paragraph, I specify the name of the journey. Uh, I have said that the default template should be displayed as a card. Uh, doesn't look that much to the card since we're not using uh, pictures in this case. Uh, and I have a limited amount here. Uh, I display, I set the classes. I can set the, the classes for the for the button navigation buttons as well. So if you add more fields here, they will fill in. So rather than specify this one for the a journey is a taxonomy is for the journey, you, you specify in your component which taxonomy you would like to use. Uh, yeah. Uh, so if a taxonomy table allows up to nine levels, that's the limitation of the of the system. I haven't made it that deep, but yeah, uh, if you were to reach that limit, you will. I will create another journey. So when you reach that far, because after nine levels, it will also be hard to overlook for a content editor. I would say. If uh, you don't have any other questions, I guess we're just gonna leave it to count down here. And as I say, like if you coming up and any questions further down the track, feel free to hit me up. I'll be available in the more boat during the afternoon here, or at least some of it be there to put you in contact with me. Uh, yeah, I should have mentioned that this is built with a JSON API. JSON API is what's feeding it to uh, feeding it out to the to React app, so that's why we can use it with uh, with stock Drupal. All we need to do is to enable a module. Uh, running out of time here, so yeah, just hit me up if you have any further questions.